So I made a camera out of chocolate and it failed. This is probably the dumbest thing I've ever done. Basically what I'm setting about to do is I'm making a simple box camera out of chocolate. I'm always saying that life was like a box of chocolate. Click the link at top if you want to catch up on the previous episode of Chocolate Camera. But in short, I made a pinhole box camera out of chocolate, like tempered chocolate. I was inspired by Andy Reardon, and who, uh, whose channel How to Cook That is one of my new YouTube favorites. My friend Danny helped me put the first one together. It technically worked, but I thought, thought I could do better. So that's what I'm doing here. Danny wasn't able to help this time, so I enlisted a food processor newly acquired to help grate the chocolate into small bits to make it easier to melt. This was much faster, although my dogs did not approve, as you saw. However, I did do slightly better on the chocolate making this time. Thankfully, the second time around was a little better. It didn't take uh, eight hours to make the camera. It took more like two. It was still difficult, but I planned a little bit more, measured a little bit better, melted the chocolate a bit more so it was easier to work with, which was definitely a plus. I even cut something resembling templates, although I should have done a little bit better. However, I measured these squares out to roughly 6x6, which would come in very important down the road. I used a piece of cinefoil for the shutter this time, made sure to make a much smaller hole, which as it turns out, for what I was trying to shoot, this is still a little bit too small. But its first test drive was at a shoot at Alex and Afton Vintage in Tyler, now in Dallas when you watch this, or just about to be in Dallas, I should say. And I set it out and it wasn't going to be something I could do with the models I was working with. But I still showed Brandon and Carly the camera and well, check out the reactions. I'm going to get a reaction to the, um, the dumbest camera ever. I, I did this project I'm doing for my vlog. I'll uh -huh. get your reaction. Okay. <laughs> okay. You don't have to like act super excited because it's pretty dumb. <laughs> a fully functional chocolate camera. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. How did you do that? Wow, that's crazy. Hey, I have the dumbest camera ever. <laughs> I. Uh, I have been watching this baking channel too much. And I made a fully functional chocolate camera. What? <laughs> yeah. Camera out of like it, like you can shoot with it. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, it's a pinhole camera. That's crazy. <laughs> so I made a chocolate box. That's amazing. Box. <laughs> yeah, that's I was awesome. like, how would you even think? It's, yeah. It's so that's very like creative. The chocolate. And I do sheets and stuff and yes. build things with it. Yes. Do you ever watch like the big chocolate eggs? Yeah. And they like crack them like, yeah. oh yeah. There's like layer and layer. Yeah. Yeah, there's this uh, YouTube channel. The result was a little bit better than the first picture I took from the last episode in Danny's living room. However, obviously making chocolate, especially poorly constructed chocolate light tight is a major challenge. And as you can see, there was something on the top of the camera that was getting in. So there's a, a burn on it on the bottom right hand corner. That means it's on the top left because the image that projects from the pinhole is upside down and backwards. Um, so yeah, this is the scene I'm shooting. I'm at home in my pajamas, which is the benefit of being at home. So I've already metered this and I'm estimating, it's hard to see, uh, hard to see in this light. That's where I have 32. It says it would register for 30 seconds on the shrubbery. So lift the shutter curtain here. I gotta be careful not to. Okay, I see it. Who knew that chocolate canning would be such a difficult thing? I hope if I had mastered pinhole photography, but I did. And I'm just gonna have to call it because it's 11 o'clock. I would like to point out my little 
improvised dark room with this safe light, which is just a mountain of gels on top of an LED with cinefoil to block it from the sink area. It's bouncing off the, the lighter colored wall and cabinetry and giving me a nice gentle amber light for my development. Ultimately, my calculations were correct using the spot meter to figure out everything. My ultimate failure was that I majorly underestimated my pinhole, but it was actually probably closer to F300 something. And when you're getting up that high, you basically double your amount of light every time you enlarge by an F-stop. So basically, if you're exposing something for an hour at F32, and then you really needed to expose it at F64, then you need to be shooting for two hours. And if you need to go to F128 from there, then we're talking four hours. You see where we're going? It should have been like a six hour exposure, maybe eight hours that first night. And it was pretty dark except for the deer lights. Anyway, so what it comes down to is that the distance your pinhole is from your film plane on a pinhole camera is your focal length. So this one is six, which meant it was roughly about 120 millimeters. Uh, at that size, uh, at, at that distance, uh, the ideal aperture I read was somewhere around F300 or whatever. It was what I first made it. And it, that's, we're talking, you need to do a daylight exposure or you need to leave it out all night. And I wasn't gonna leave a box of chocolate in my backyard all night, cause who knows what would have happened to that. I, I didn't wanna waste all the chocolate. I, I'm eating this thing, okay? So what we come down to is the ultimate moral for me of this chocolate camera saga, which is that I did not really get a good photo from this camera. I got some interesting photos and I certainly proved that you could make a camera out of a box of chocolate, but, or a box made of chocolate, but ultimately it was about the learning experience because I had used pinhole cameras and I had done them very simplistically. I really didn't pay attention to a lot of the details that go behind them. I just knew basically how to make them and how to get quick exposures and like daylight conditions and stuff like that. But this was a, a more of a, an advanced pinhole thing and or, you know, relatively speaking. And so I had to really sit down and think about what I was doing. And even though I missed every shot, essentially, of course, I, I choose the most challenging path like every time. But, uh, we're, you know, it's fun to it's fun to push things because if I had just gone out and done a simple daylight exposure with this, it would have been entertaining. But would it have been truly challenging? I got this and failed a bunch, but I learned a lot about pinhole photography. I even learned about making chocolate things. I wanted to, you know, have some amazing uh, night photo for this vlog, but... That's not real. You, you want to see how to do things and you want to see how to be a better photographer when you watch stuff on YouTube usually, or you want to learn something that will help you. And this is something that will help you if you will go out and do the work and suck a lot. It, even if you don't get an immediate good result, it's going to pay off down the road. You're going to learn a lot. Failure is part of the process and failure is the process, and you're probably doing better if you fail in the long run. I have a lot of great stuff planned for the rest of the year, and I guess I'm going to eat some chocolate and uh, imagine that really sappy I will remember you, will you remember me song at the end of this because I don't have the money for that. If you like this kind of content behind the scenes and uh, apparently weird experiments, click subscribe, turn on notifications, like the video, comment. Thanks again, and I will see you next week. Bye. I'm a traveling spirit. I've seen many shows. From the West Pacific to the island of Kenya They treat me like a son anywhere I go And even though no one can tell I still feel that I'm alone I'm alone I'm alone I'm alone Leave me stranded, I know how to handle it